Hi, I'm Lois Romano of Politico, and it's time to turn the table on Candy Crowley of CNN. Congress is uh, leaving today um, and leaving a lot of business on the table, and one of the biggest issues is will there be a government shutdown when they get back? Can you give us a re reality check on that? We tend to watch how the Republicans are going to work with the Democrats and whether they're going to come to some agreement. This time we have to watch how the Republicans are going to work with the Republicans. This is a genuine split in the Republican Party. Uh, the preponderance at this point seems to come down politically on the side of if Republicans force a shutdown of the government, it will hurt us next year in the midterms. And, and that's their political view, even if they have uh, some empathy for those who say, I'll, I'll vote for a, you know, a continuing resolution or keeping the government in business so long as we defund Obamacare. I, I think in the end, that political side will win, but not without some give and take. But it's really the Republicans versus Republicans we're gonna need to watch in September. Um, okay, this week we've watched um, two hot prospects for 2016, Rand Paul and Chris Christie, really go at it. Uh, do you have a view on who comes out ahead of that brawl? Um, ask me in 2016, because that's what this is about. Uh, th this is about who's going to lead the Republican Party. There are plenty of Democrats who don't agree with President Obama on the right or the left, but when you want to know what Republican, uh, I'm sorry, what Democratic policy is, you look to the president and go, oh, well, here's what the Democratic Party stands for. There's no such person in the Republican Party, and there won't be until a nominee is chosen. Uh, and even then, falling in line doesn't come easily to Republicans at this, in this day and age. But nonetheless, I think this is, it's hard to know who's going to come out uh, on top, as you say, the more moderate kind of Chris Christie um, uh, vision of the Republican Party or uh, Rand, uh, um, Rand Cruz. That tells you something, doesn't it? Ted Cruz or Rand Paul, uh, who come at it from a very conservative, and certainly in the case of Paul, from a libertarian point of view. So that's the fight we're going to have, whether it's about spending or whether or not uh, uh, you know the the scope of the government's surveillance. Uh, whether I think you will see this fight, this gap, show up over the next uh, the years, uh, the years between now and the time Republicans get a nominee. That's the fight we're going to hear. Tell us what we can expect on your show on Sunday. Well, we, we will have Lindsey Graham on. You know, the, the closing of the embassies over the weekend certainly intrigues us. Most of the Middle East, some sort of unidentified uh, threat chatter. We want to talk a little bit about that. But as you know, the president has asked Graham and uh, Senator John McCain to go to Egypt, which is still kind of in turmoil. We want to talk about that. But we'll also have others on to talk about exactly what you're talking about. Uh, how does the end of uh, the summer, really, for Congress bode for fall. And I also want to tell you we have the first woman who is likely to become a full-time referee for the NFL. And we talked to her about politics in the NFL, so it'll be interesting. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, do you watch the newsroom? I, I don't. A and I, I did at first. I, and it's funny because it is this constant source uh, of conversation with friends. And so I hear little bits and pieces. In fact, I, I talked to a, a reporter who said, do you watch it? And I said, no. And they said, well, do you think in the last eight seconds you could drop something into a piece to go on air live? And I said, no, it would never, ever, ever happen. And apparently it happened um, in the newsroom. <laughs> and likewise, we had a huge conversation on the plane. I was with some other journalists um, who uh, talked about the way the campaign bus was portrayed and these kids sort of, you know, uh, hassling the Romney campaign and then being sort of left in the middle of nowhere with their suitcases as the bus drives off. It wouldn't happen. I'm not saying that you, you know <laughs> campaigns haven't been mad, but you and I know they're not going to leave reporters in the middle of nowhere with their suitcases. So, so not too realistic is basically what you're hearing. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. All right, one final question. Um, there's a, there seems to be a very public uh, competition going on here for the Fed. Um, the two prime candidates are Larry Summers and, and Janet Yellen, and, and there could be a third candidate. Um, what do you think about the way this is playing out, just, just sort of the drama, the atmospherics of it? it it's interesting because it's, it's one of those Democrat versus Democrat discussions at the moment because there certainly were Democrats who were at the president and said, hey, Yellen is the one. This is who you should appoint. Their problem is not so much that Summers is still sort of shadowed uh, by some really controversial remarks he made about women uh, when he was uh, in, um, uh, up at a university, uh, Yale, I think, in Harvard, actually. Um, but in any case, 
uh, it, the objection that Democrats have is they believe that Summers was part and parcel of what went wrong with the economy before uh, we all saw it publicly cave in. So they're, they're not thrilled uh, with his view on regulation, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's the other, hey, this would be the first woman uh, to become uh, head of the Fed, and she seems to follow Bernanke fairly carefully, which has been uh, certainly what some Democrats want. So I think this will be a fight, and the president, I think, is a little sensitive to this push and pull. I thought it was unusual that Democrats so early before the choice would send a letter saying, here's who we want you to pick. So um, as you know, he doesn't take well to that kind of pressure. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Exactly. Okay, Candy Crowley, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Lois.